Guys, I thought I'd give you an update on uh, my antenna situation. These are the two antennas that I had in the air last week. Uh, I've taken them both down, both for different reasons. Uh, we'll start with the tram. The tram has been up on the end of my house for about a year now. Well, up, up until the, the end of last week. I took this down mainly because it was hard to get skip with this antenna. Fantastic for local not so good for skip so i pulled that down and i put my homemade ground plane on before i put it up there i upgraded it remember if you saw the video of the build of that antenna it had four uh four foot long fire sticks as the ground plane i went and bought another steel whip and I already had a 102 inch steel whip and the two 8 foot fiberglass antennas. So I put those four antennas on there as a ground plane. The SWR got even better. It became slightly more broad banded. And oh, that thing is doing fantastic. It's not quite as good as the tram for local talk. Uh, the faint, faint stations that I could just barely talk to before, I can't hear them now. But this thing does very well for Skip. Uh, for Skip, <laughs> I had the morning after I put this on the house, there was a slight little bit of California coming in. I mean slight. I had the beam on the garage pointing right at California. And I'll show you that now. I'll show you what the, uh, the Skip was that morning. 754, 754, 151, South Carolina, waving. Good morning, good morning, 151, South Carolina. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> 754, 754, 151, South Carolina, waving. 151, South Carolina. Good morning, good morning. RCI 2950 was connected to this antenna and the uh, Washington was on my beam. And if you notice, the, this antenna was receiving just about as well as the beam. Uh, keep in mind the Washington has a better receiver than the, the RCI does. But you could hear how faint that signal was and I was reaching him with this antenna. So I'm already very happy with it. I've gotten a lot of skip very easily already with this antenna. Uh, the tra like I said, the tram was great for local. It just couldn't hang in there for Skip. So whenever Skip was coming, I'd always end up down in my garage. Now I can stay put in my nice, comfy, warm house. Then we have <laughs> the two-element uh, Yagi. This is a uh, two-rotor setup. So it can turn uh, vertical or horizontal with that motor right there. Or it can turn north, south, east, west with that motor. I took this one down because we had some big birds around here. And one of them crashed into the reflector. Uh, it bent the reflector a little bit. And after the bird crashed into it, this gearbox got jammed up. Uh, it won't turn right now. So I'm going to have to take that apart and see what happened inside uh, the bird had to have hit it pretty hard <laughs> it, it's bent right down here by the boom and like i said it it knocked that out of whack and stopped that from working i had to take it down anyway because the gamma match started giving me trouble again i don't know if we can see that that al that aluminum is in rough shape and it keeps losing connection i know that nut's rusty too but it's got a good stainless steel washer behind it. Uh, but that would just get weird sometimes and uh, disconnect on me. And it, it may have disconnected one morning. Uh, I had some problems. Oh, well, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to take that back. I remember what that problem was. This was set vertical. And I had a bird perched right in here on the gamma match. So the bird was sitting right here. And it made my SWR go up to about 4 to 1. I was talking to a friend of mine, and he said to me, Whoa, whoa, stop talking. Something's wrong with your radio. And sure enough, when I checked the SWR, it was sky high. 
I came outside and looked up at the antenna, and there was a bird perched right in there, just sleeping right between the poles and on top of that bracket. I gave the antenna a little shake, and it took off, and the SWR went right back down. But that connection has given me problems. I've had momentary disconnects with it. You know how sometimes you'll have the radio on, and all of a sudden the static will just disappear? And you give the mic a quick little bump key up, and poop, the static comes right back. Well, that's a, a bad connection on the coax, and it was happening right there. So that had to come down anyway. I have a, a future project in mind for this antenna. Uh, it's going to get turned back into either a three element or possibly a four. And I'm going to build a temporary, or not a temporary, a, it's going to be a permanent, a tower, a small, probably 22 foot tower behind my garage. Hey, hey there's my cat. She decided to join in. Uh, I'm going to put a 22 foot tall tower back there and it's going to hinge at the base and the antenna is going to go up there and I'm also going to use that for any antennas I build in the future because replacing that or well, taking that down I put that up there that is that uh, Radio Shack antenna it was made by Samsung back in the 80s and possibly early 90s. I should look into it someday and see if Samsung is still making any antennas. I don't ever remember seeing an antenna with the Samsung name on it. Uh, but when I looked up the part number, because like I said, I have the original box for this antenna with the Radio Shack part number on it. And it was made by Samsung. So I added uh, ground plane radials to it. The ground plane radials, oh, they really woke this thing up. Uh, it makes it good for skip. It's not as good as the beam for skip, uh, but it's fantastic for local. This thing is way, way better for local use than the beam is. Even with the beam set on vertical, this does way better. But there's one of those birds. There's one of those birds that crashed into my antenna. Did you see it? He's flying around up there. I can't really see the camera, so I don't know if we're seeing it or not. Yeah, there he is. Look, circling around where my antenna is again. Yeah, yeah, it isn't there for you to crash into anymore. Anyway, <laughs> this antenna is going to be permanent up there. Uh, this one's staying put because I'm getting too old to be going up and down on the roof all the time. To I know it's hinged at the base of that, but it's just this antenna... That boom pole was 21 feet above the peak of the roof. And let me tell you, two of us standing it up and lowering it down, it was difficult. Uh, this last time that I lowered it down, I lowered it myself. And <laughs> once I got to about chest height with the mast, whew, I didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> it wanted to just come right out of my hands. So again, this is going to go on a a fold over tower that's on the ground. I know it's not going to be as high in the air as that, but this antenna, this antenna is only going to be used for skip. And for skip, half wavelength or more is uh, more than sufficient. All right, that's my antenna update. I'll keep you posted on the progress on the beam. Peebles is uh, deciding to use it as a jungle gym. I keep you posted on the up on progress on it. And what I end up coming up with. I think I'm going to eliminate the gamma match. And most likely I'm going to do a direct feed. Which is where the four element comes in. Because the three elements that are part of that Mako antenna. It's a, uh, all these parts are from a Mako M103C. But those parts, I can pull that gamma match off. And turn that driven element into a director. I already have a reflector that's the right length. So I can turn that into a director, put the other director back on here, and make my own uh, direct feed driven element for it. And it's going to remain flat side uh, because I will no longer need to put this vertical because I have that as a vertical antenna. And by the way, that is just doing phenomenal. That thing is doing fantastic. 
It actually, I think, receives better than this beam did. Not by a lot, but it does receive a little bit better. The tram antenna is going to end up going into another location. Uh, I'm going to stick that in the attic of my house. I'm going to just try it up there and see how it does. It may not tune in very well because of being in close proximity to the roof and all the nails and metal tie-ins and all that stuff that's up there, but I'm going to give it a shot and see how it works up in an attic. All right, guys, that's it. That's my antenna update, and uh, I'll keep you in po keep you posted. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.